Hello, this is Pastor Tim Miller from St. John's Lutheran Church, New Minden, and welcome to the children's message. Today we're going to take a look at one of the most important windows we have at St. John's, the crucifixion of our Lord. It tells us when they nailed Jesus to the cross. Let's start from the top. And here you can see some important things about Jesus. Of course, he's once again surrounded by the red nimbus or cloud around his head, reminding us, as in all the pictures and all the windows, that the reason Jesus came was to shed his blood for us, to pour it out on the cross for us, so that the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, would cleanse us from all sin. You see the golden cross there. Jesus, by his cross, has earned for us the crown of everlasting life. Notice on Jesus' head is the crown of thorns. They put that on his head. They pressed it down. They even hit him on the head with a stick. They were making fun of him as the king. Oh yeah, you're a king. We'll put a crown on you. But what a horrible crown it was. Thorns are first mentioned in the Bible in the book of Genesis when it talks about the curse of the ground that comes as a result of sin. God told Adam that the, the earth would bring forth thorns and thistles so that, yes, he would still be able to make a living from the earth, working the soil and growing crops and so forth, but it would be very difficult. It's the, the curse brought on the creation, and Jesus is taking that curse into himself. Notice Jesus' look on his face. Even though he is suffering horribly, he is at peace, and he is concerned about others, as we'll see, looking down. While Jesus was on the cross, he spoke seven times and gave us seven wonderful things to think about. For example, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He told a thief next to him, he said, Today you'll be with me in paradise. He said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Showing that Jesus was suffering just like, like being in hell for us. He said, I thirst. He said, It is finished. He said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Notice Jesus' right hand. He has three fingers out, his thumb and two fingers, and this is the way the blessing is usually pronounced in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, reminding us that when Jesus died, it is what brings the blessing on, on sinners. If you look a little bit further down, you see the whole creation is, is struggling here. You see the sun is about to be covered up. You see the, the lightning bolt. The Bible does not say that there was a thunderstorm that day, but it does talk about darkness on the earth from noon to three o'clock. You get the feeling that the, the whole creation is, is suffering under the judgment of God as God's son carries the sins of the world. In the Bible, darkness has to do with judgment, God's punishment against sin, and that's exactly what's happening. We see Jesus' waist covered with a cloth. It's terrible to think about, but they, they stripped off the clothes of Jesus. And remember the soldiers who were nailing Jesus to the cross, they divided them up by casting lots. One of the things Jesus said from the cross was when he spoke to John and his mother Mary. Here Jesus is looking down on them with love, and he's concerned about them. So he says, woman, behold your son, son, behold your mother. And from that day on, John took Mary into his own home and he treated her just as if she were his own mother. And it's interesting that on all of our windows, the only person to be pictured more than once is Mary. Here she is at the cross and remember she is there wrapping Jesus with swaddling clothes in the other window when Jesus was born. And at that time, when Jesus was just a few weeks old, a man named Simeon said, when he took Jesus in his arms at the temple, he said, a sword will pierce your own soul too. He told that to Mary. And surely here that's coming true at the cross. At the base of the cross, you can see these spikes symbolizing the, the great suffering with which they inflicted on Jesus, how they nailed him in his, in his hands, in his feet. You can see it's sort of on a hill here. They nailed Jesus to a cross on a, on a hill outside of Jerusalem. 
if you look even more closely you can see our cemetery in the background the tombstones and just think those people were laid to rest there trusting trusting that jesus died on the cross for them knowing that because of jesus they would rise again on the last day and here in the bottom panel you can see that very clearly right next to the feet of mary remember when jesus died it says there was an earthquake and the rocks split open and many of the saints who had died were brought back to life and they came into the holy city of jerusalem it reminds us that one day these graves also will be opened and the ground will split when jesus comes back and he gives the call and these beloved saints many of our grandparents and great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents they will come forth alive because jesus died for them he took this curse of sin and he rose again from the dead so let us pray dear lord jesus christ we give you thanks and praise for your great love for us that brought you to the cross we thank you that you bring us blessing because you took the curse for us we thank you that you kept all of god's commandments you even cared for your mother honored her as you were getting ready to die help us dear lord to keep the faith to keep on trusting in you and believing in you so that one day when you return, we also will rise. We will be with you forever, as also our loved ones who have also died ahead of us. We love you, Jesus, and we pray in your name. Amen.